Hi everyone, um, welcome back. Uh, just a quick introductory video, um, just uh, showing you what I've been doing today. This afternoon, spent a couple of hours, God, they take a time, to put together some uh, Perry Cezars. These are their uh, plastic kit. I got a few box loads in my stockings for Christmas uh, from my better half, which was really kind of her. So I've just been assembling them today. Uh, they'll then get um, undercoated and blackwashed, uh, and then um, we'll we'll start the painting. So I'll show you a bit of a journey on those. And thanks for all the feedback on what games we should play. And the really nice thing was, uh, just, most of the feedback said just play what you're really enjoying. Um, so uh, so I'm sure me and Charlie will carry on doing that. Um, there was fairly good shout outs for uh, lots more Napoleonics, uh, and also some interest in us playing a few ECW games, uh, and possibly some of our mid-imperial Romans. So I think we'll keep with our Napoleonic focus uh, and, and hoping to play a game tomorrow. So we'll put that up probably next weekend. Um, but uh, we'll also throw some Ancients and some English Civil War in. So uh, thanks for all that feedback. Really just appreciate all the comments. Uh, and we'll get on with today's videos. As I mentioned on my post for this Christmas video, I got the uh, Hexim uh, game Quattro Bar, uh, Last Eagles Quattro Bar and Last Eagles uh, Lingy. Uh, these are traditional board games and uh, someone on the uh, comments, a couple of people actually said why don't you have a go with those games and then transfer some of the scenarios as they develop onto the tabletop. So that struck me as a really great idea as a way for framing some scenarios uh, and also giving you a bit of a quick snapshot of, of what those games look like. So we'll have a go with the uh, Quattro Bra today. So I'm going to play a couple of turns out with that. Uh, so show you some shots for the game and we'll uh, then see what uh, we can transfer to the tabletop. Okay, so uh, here's a bit of a view of the bomb site that is my study. Um, stacks of books, painting equipment, models, boxes, cupboards full of figures, cupboards full of scenery, more cupboards full of scenery, figures, boxes full of stuff, more figures, more figures, not very big study, was really organised, uh, now it's just filled up with stuff. So um, anyway, uh, I've got quite a big desk, which is fortunate, and I have been able to get uh, the Quattro Bar game just about set out on the desk. So I can play a couple of turn turns on the desk and uh, we can use the space in the dining room to uh, uh, play out the scenarios. So here's, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the game, a, a view of the playing uh, surface. Um, so we've got a map here, really, really nice artwork on the map. And this is the Quattro Bra scenario, as I mentioned. And it uh, moves up to the uh, crossroads at Quattro Bra. And then the way that you play the game, uh, all units enter the board and they have to get orders. So we have a little uh, orders uh, map on the side here where you place the long term orders for your various different core, which are the objectives they've got to move towards. And then the movement system encourages you to move in the direction of those long-term objectives. Uh, and you have a limited ability to move those objectives with your leaders on the table. Uh, and you have the traditional sort of melee and fire tables, which we uh, probably will not be using in the game, as we'll uh, transfer this onto the tabletop. So I'll just uh, show you what the game setup looks like at the beginning of uh, turn one, which uh, for the historic scenario starts at two o'clock in the afternoon. So here we have uh, Pope Ponchet and the Prince of Orange with the uh, Netherlands Second Division deployed around the uh, Gemina Corps farm. Um, so they're on the road that leads towards um, Frasna. That's, that's the main uh, road down here, which we have the French on. And we have some British troops uh, due to arrive in the distance there and some Brunswickers with Quatre Bras in the rear. So the first objective for the French will be to capture Gemincourt and start advancing towards Quatre Bras. To do this, we have uh, some of the French troops already on the table. We have Rai with the French 6th Infantry Division uh, advancing up the main road. And we have the French 5th Infantry Division on its flank. And then moving up in support, we have Jerome's uh, 9th Infantry Division and Ney with the Imperial Guard Cavalry. So um, that's the uh, initial setup of the game, uh, with the Dutch Belgians starting on defence orders. Uh, and I'll just play through the first turn and we'll see how the scenario starts developing 
and what we might get to play on the table tomorrow. Okay, so uh, I've just completed the first turn and uh, we haven't had any combat or anything. Units have just been f moving forward into combat, into contact. Um, divisional commanders can get up to two activations. Uh, you, you activate alternately and you need to roll under a leader's command uh, score to be able to activate a division. Um, so you don't necessarily activate in uh, in rotation, it can go back to your opponent. So anyway, in that turn the French have moved uh, Killerman's Cuirassiers uh, up forward uh, and uh, they are now uh, parallel to the guard-like cavalry, whereas Rye has moved forward with the 6th Division, uh, approaching Gemincourt, and the 5th Division are out uh, performing a flanking move. There's a real challenge for them because they have to stay uh, out or move close to their objective, which is currently Gemincourt. So at the start of turn 2, Rye will probably have to update his objectives to Quatre Bras. Uh, and in uh, in support, the 9th Division keeps uh, moving forward. Um, so we'll probably see on turn two the first combats of the game, which will transfer to the table. Okay, so the Allies have got initiative, so we have to roll for their leaders. Uh, I think we'll leave Perponchet in his defensive formation here, and we'll try and move uh, Picton up in support. So we need to roll less than his leadership value. He's got a leadership value of eight there, so I need to roll less than eight. To activate him. I've rolled a six so we can activate his division and move it forward. Okay so the Allies have now done two activations. We've moved Picton's division forward and the Brunswickers have also activated. Uh, so we'll put activation counters by both Picton and by Brunswick. So they have activated. In addition Rye has done an activation. Uh, because he wants to keep his outflanking move going the 5th uh, division can't move any further down this road here to try and uh, get towards Sile, um, because it would be moving further away from its Gemincourt objective. If it was going to do that, it would have to roll a leadership test for each stack and only could move at half speed. So rather than activating his division, he's changed his strategic orders and moved them toward, to Quatre Bras as his objective. That's got to be within 15 hexes, which it is, of his current position, and that should allow his flanking to move when he gets his second activation of the turn. We can also activate uh, his uh, various divisions by using Ney, the core commander. So Ney can activate anyone within his command range. Um, so he can have a go at uh, doing an activation and moving these uh, infantry units as well. So uh, that will be the end of uh, Rise activation. We have to see whether we move on to the second part of the turn or not. No, we don't. So we carry on and have another allied activation. OK, so it looks like we've got our first combat of the game. We've got two French divisions. We've got the 6th and the 9th division uh, now choosing to attack uh, attack the Dutch-Belgian line. Uh, and that attack's going in before the British reinforcements from Picton have been able to get in place. And it looks like we'll have our second combat, uh, which we will also probably play out um, as the French 5th division and the Light Cavalry division attack the Brunswickers, who are securing the British flank here. So, looks like we've got a couple of scenarios to play out in this game. Hope you like uh, the look of the game, and uh, we'll see how these scenarios play out. And then we'll apply the results to the counters on the table. There is a direct linkage between the uh, strength of the units here and the point scores on the counters. Alright, see you all uh, on the real table. Okay, well we just set up our game for this evening for um, the Quattro Brass scenario we uh, worked out playing the um, Hexism game. Um, here we are just uh, showing the setup. Uh, we've got uh, Pierre Pont, uh, no, that's Gemincourt Farm there on the left, held by a battalion of the 28th Orange Nassau, supported by some Nassau skirmishers in this wood line. So Nassau riflemen there, and some skirmishers facing off against the French. Supported to their right by a brigade, a uh, further brigade of Nassau. Here we have the 1st and 2nd uh, Nassau battalions uh, and another battalion of the 28th with a Dutch-Belgian foot artillery battery on the hill. And to their right we've got the line Dutch regiment, so two battalions of uh, militia on the hill. Third battalion of militia and a line infantry battalion and the 27th Jaegers 
uh, on the flank, occupying the uh, Pierre Pont farm. Facing off against them, we've got most of the two French attacking French divisions. So uh, as I look here, we've got a line brigade on the right. Another line brigade in the centre and a light brigade. The last two brigades from Jerome's division on the far left. And we've done some approach marches before we started the game and there are some casualties on a couple of the French battalions from the long range artillery fire here. We'll see how long the Dutch can hold off this assault as we play the game tomorrow. All right. See you all tomorrow. Cheers. Okay, so here we are ready to crack on with turn one. The French are just uh, off the table uh, and we'll move them on the table as part of their first move. Uh, as you saw last night, we've done the pre-game bombardment. Um, I had the, the figures on the table edge just to uh, work that through, uh, but now they're redeployed all on that windowsill <laughs> and uh, I'll be coming on with activation rolls this turn. So we have the Dutch-Belgian uh, Dutch troops uh, occupying the right flank and we have Dutch Nassau troops occupying their left flank. All right we'll crack on and see who's got initiative in turn one. So Charlie probably won't be playing with us today his br elder brother has just got a brand new PC so they're upstairs configuring the PC at the moment but he has given me orders to hold the line and hold the two strong points uh, as orders for the Dutch. Okay let's see who's got initiative. The French get four, the Allies get uh, 11, so that's initiative for the Allies. Okay, all uh, ADCs were active, so we'll start with uh, French movement as the Allies are going to move forward this turn. Okay, so we started the French deployment. We've got Foy and his division here on the French left flank. So all regular line troops. First four battalions, first uh, of Foy's brigades, has arrived on table. And then to their flank, we have the second line regiment as part of Jerome's corps, or Jerome's division rather. Here we have Jerome himself. Nice little vignette, if you can see that. Of Jerome, with uh, also the First light, first leisure, as part of his first brigade coming onto the table. Now the terrain around this particular combat was relatively flat and actually um, tailed off to a valley towards the German Corps. Um, I didn't have enough uh, hills to put German Corps in the valley, so we sort of just put a little bit of higher ground down the middle of the table and it slightly lower at the German Corps end, but broadly the table is flat and rolling, not an awful lot to block line of sight. The trees are really just decorative, not obstacles for employment uh, or obstacles to movement. All right, and the plan for the French, uh, we're gonna try and break the Dutch-Belgian center, Nassau center, isolate the two farms and then assault the farms. If we go straight against the farms, we think we'll take too much damage and get thrown back. So we'll try and break the Dutch centre, uh, hopefully break brigades and have them fall back out of the farms without them being assaulted directly, but if that fails we'll crack the centre and then assault one or both of the farms. Alright, uh, in terms of the hexicism board game, uh, each turn on that board game is about an hour, so that's the equivalent uh, each general darmy turn, which is the rules we're following here, is 10 to 20 minutes. So we're going to play six, six turns on the table, it represents one turn on uh, uh, on, the, on the board game. All right, we'll crack on then. So in the board game, the assault's been launched, so we're reaching the same point. We'll do the first six turns on the table. Okay, so we'll open first with our Dutch-Belgian uh, foot artillery battery here on the ridge against the French troops that are advancing towards them. They'll be firing at medium range. So that's how we go. We've rolled a five at effective range. Is one casualty on the French battalion. 
I think I from memory skirmish screens only block uh, casualties at short range, so that'll go straight through to the battalion behind. We'll now do some skirmisher fire. So we've got four bases of skirmishers here. Uh, only so that'll be three dice, and we lose one for firing at the French skirmisher screen. Get no casualties, and then we've got a similar uh, position over here as the Dutch Jaegers. We'll open fire against that French skirmisher screen, advancing uh, on the right flank. Uh, should actually be three dice, so I'll roll one more. Oh no, sorry, it is only two dice, so we'll keep that. Uh, five and two, so that's the first casualty on the French skirmisher screen. We'll mark those up. So somewhat unlike Nate at uh, Quattro Bra, I've decided to uh, get a hurry on here. So the French artillery um, in the board game is still moving up the road in support of uh, Jerome and Foy's division, so uh, hasn't yet reached the edge of the table. So we're not going to delay our assault for that to arrive and to deploy. We're just going to get straight on with an infantry only assault. So there's no artillery fire from the French. Uh, we'll open up with our skirmishers. So we've got six bases there. So. Six bases is four dice, uh, reduced to three because they're bearing at the uh, Nassau skirmisher screen. Let's see how they do. Okay, that's one casualty on the Nassau skirmisher screen. Then with the next set, let's just check the range, see if they are in range at all of the artillery battery. Nope, they're out of range, so that whole skirmisher screen is out of range. Then the final French skirmisher screen on this flank for Foy will also open up against the Dutch Jaegers. That's one casualty on the Dutch Jaegers. We'll mark that up. Okay, so that's the end of turn one. We'll move on to turn two. The French get three, roll for three ABCs, two for there. Um, no, three, one, two, three brigades on the table. Three for there. Brigades and an extra one for Ney. So they will actually get four dice. Four ABCs for the French. They get three, and then two for the allies. All right, they get one ADC off. All right, we'll allocate those ADCs, and then roll for initiative. Unfortunately for the French, uh, Jerome's brigade in the centre here has gone hesitant, perhaps as a result of taking those artillery casualties last turn. Um, we put all of the French ADCs on two rerolls, uh, so we failed our reroll on that one. Uh, but the other two brigade formations are both active. For the Dutch, all units are active. Let's draw for initiative, so this will be minus one on the French die. Okay, so the French get five down to four. Allies have initiative again. Allies get to move first on turn two. Okay, so I've completed the movement in turn two. The Nassau have started to edge forward a bit towards the crest of this ridge to provide support to their artillery battery. Uh, and their supporting battalions have also moved up in line. In the woods, the small unit of Nassau Jaegers have pulled back a little bit. Uh, whereas opposing them, Jerome's uh, Light Infantry Brigade is now fully deployed on the table and starting to threaten the farm. Uh, and if you look, you can see we've got a small unit of engineers. They're Jerome's Divisional Engineers. I uh, attach them to my uh, Brigadier. Uh, and if he has support a uh, unit that's assaulting a building, I give them an extra plus one for having the engineers deployed. And similarly, if engineers are attached to a unit depend defending a built-up area, I will give them an extra plus one. In the centre, uh, the French attack by Jerome's other brigade is stalled, uh, uh, as we heard earlier from the command rolls. And over on this flank, we've now got Foy's brigade fully deployed on table, another five battalions coming on in support starting to provide a uh, threat to the farm on the right-hand flank. Uh, and similarly, the French uh, have caused the Dutch to uh, move their supporting battalions slightly up uh, to offset the threat of an attack on this particular flank. All right, we'll get on to firing for the Allies in turn two. Okay, so we've exchanged skirmisher fire and the garrison of Gimacourt has also uh, opened up against the French battalions that are moving up. A couple of casualties here and there. And we're now going to have a go with this Dutch Belgian artillery battery. Um, it's going to fire at that uh, light infantry battalion there, which has already taken a few casualties. It is at effective range and it will get bounced through against the supporting uh, brigade as well. So let's see how the Dutch Belgians do. Wow, they rolled a double 12. So that will be a destiny test and quite significant casualties against the French. I'll just work those through. 
Okay, so that's four casualties on the attacking French battalion. We didn't get any bounce through, but we do have a destiny chest on them. So this will actually be at minus two, because they have now taken eight casualties on their battalion as a result of cumulative artillery fire during their approach march. So let's see how they do. They get a three at minus two, then takes them down to a one. They will uh, at least retreat. Discipline test, a three or less, they retreat and they lose a further 1d3 casualties. So they lose one more casualty uh, and they will retreat behind their supporting battalion. Okay, and then um, we've got the destiny test result for rolling a double six. So we get a five. That is study the buffs. So we were a cover one casualty uh, or melee with a land. So the artillery count battery had got no casualties. So that actually will have no effect. All right, I will apply the retreat. Uh, and that's the end of firing in turn two. Okay, so we just rolled for ADCs and unfortunately for the Dutch Belgians, uh, although they had two ADCs and had two rerolls, both of their brigades have gone hesitant. So their artillery will only be able to fire directly forwards uh, and at a maximum at effective range. Should be all right, they still got an artillery, uh, sorry, French infantry battalion in their sights. Uh, for the French, uh, we only got two ADCs off, but fortunately for the French, all of their brigades are active. Um, so that retreating battalion now just simply goes unformed uh, and all of their brigades will be able to move forward. So let's roll for initiative. The Allies are at minus two this turn. Okay, so another bad roll by the French, uh, only five. But the Allies uh, simply only roll a three at minus two, they get into a one. So the French have initiative finally and get to move first in this turn. We'll start with if there are any charges to declare. OK, so, so in turn three, nothing was in charge range, so everything's just moved up. So if we start on the left hand flank, we can see the French battalions has uh, moved across its engineers in support potentially uh, in anticipation of supporting an assault on Gemincourt. Uh, another battalion has moved uh, into these woods, preceded by its skirmishers, and the light Jaeger, small Jaeger company of Nassau's has fallen back, um, and they have now aligned themselves with the main Nassau battalion uh, on this ridge line. French battalions continue to press up against the uh, slightly higher ground here with their skirmish screen now getting very close uh, to the uh, Dutch lines and the uh, Nassau skirmishes there. In the centre, uh, there'll still probably be another round of firing for the Dutch artillery battery before it has to uh, withdraw, um, as the French battalions uh, were hindered by their hesitant moves in the previous turn. But the French skirmish screen is now uh, at least in range to start providing some pressure on the Dutch guns. As we move across, the uh, assault by Foy continues to move forward. Uh, they've now reached the slightly higher ground and are threatening the Dutch battalions and the Dutch militia has deployed into the line to provide support to its foremost units. The Dutch skirmisher screen has been pushed back by the advancing French units uh, they still hold the farm. So we'll now crack on with firing uh, in turn three. French to go first. Okay, so more exchange of skirmish fire, a few more uh, individual casualties, but nothing dramatic on any of the formations. We'll now again open fire with this Dutch battery. They were hesitant, but the target is at close range, so they can fire at normal effect uh, against that attacking French column. Okay, so we get an extra uh, casualty dice as the target is at um, close or effective range and in column. And because there is a skirmish screen more than three inches away from the column, they will take the first casualty that we cause. We get a four, that'll be uh, nothing, but we do get one from the casualty dice. Uh, so that's one casualty on the skirmish screen. That's it for turn three. Looks like it's going to be a pretty dramatic turn in turn four as a whole lot of charges are going to come in from the French. It's going to be a critical, critical turn for um, uh, initiative. Um, mm, yes, before I do that, I have got some volley fire. So the uh, Nassau down here, I've done, done the artillery and I've done the skirmish, but I haven't done the volleys. So we've got a couple of volleys from the uh, Dutch Belgians to do, so we'll do that firing now. So the Nassau, Nassau Rifle Company counts as a small unit, so this will be firing as an inferior volley at minus two because its targets are skirmishers, because again, the skirmish screen is sufficiently far in advance of the attacking column to mask it. We roll a seven, so from an inferior volley at minus two, that takes it down to a five. That's far discipline if they're a recruit. 
the Nassau are actually reservists and they have taken no casualties, so it's not a loss of fire discipline, but there is no effect from that firing. All right, we've now got firing from this mission militia battalion against the French skirmish screen. Uh, these, the militia are uh, recruits, so I think this will be an inferior volley again at minus two. Two, that would be nothing, and that'll be a loss of fire discipline on this militia battalion. And then this battalion will also open up. Uh, it will not get the minus two penalty for firing at skirmishes because the skirmish screen is not more than three inches ahead of the column it's seeking to mask. So this is a full effect uh, volley, uh, but it will still be an inferior volley because it's a militia battalion. We roll a six. So for an inferior volley, a six is one casualty on that attacking French battalion. Okay, so that is the end of turn three. You see I've marked that unit uh, with the smoke to reflect the loss of fire discipline. We will go on with ADCs for turn four. <laughs> Just to record it, not a great roll for the French, no ADCs at all, uh, and two for the Allies. So we will try and uh, have a go for artillery assault, I think, on our artillery battery in the centre. So let's roll for activation of the Nassau Brigade, see if artillery assault comes off. It does, and then for our other brigade, is active as well. So the French are pausing for thought. Let's see how many of their brigades they can get active. So we'll start with the Light Brigade. That is active on a four. Let's start there then. Jerome's regular brigade in the centre. That is also active. All right, the forefront of uh, Foy's brigade. That is active. So this is looking pretty good for the French. And then finally, Foy's supporting brigade is also active. So both sides, despite... The French, having no ADCs, have got all their brigades active, so this will be a straight run off for initiative. Okay, the Allies have initiative in turn four. Okay, so we've got a massive assault here. Firstly, this French battalion has assaulted German Corps. Because it's assaulting a built-up area, it doesn't need um, to do a charge test. It automatically goes into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it's being supported by a second battalion here, which will be able to reinforce the attack. In the centre here, uh, this French battalion has uh, assaulted the Nassau line and it's got a rear and a flank support from two battalions moving up uh, to assist it. Here, uh, Jerome's line brigade has assaulted the artillery battery and again there are two battalions available in support for that one. And Jerome uh, is being busy so he's a third assault on the turn. This battalion is assaulting this militia line and again has two battalions in support. And then now we've crossed to Foy where this battalion is at all, again, assaulting the second militia battalion, and it has no less than five battalions in support. I think we can only have a maximum of three. So we'll see how all of these charge results go. We'll start at the left and work our way across. Then we'll come back to normal movement. OK, first we'll do a defensive volley from this Nassau battalion um, as it's charged. It's a large battalion, so it'll get some benefit from that. OK, so this will be a standard volley with two combat dice. Okay, so we get a five, which is not great. We do get one casualty from the compact dice. There we go, from the five we rolled there on the blue dice. So a five standard volley is one casualty, so that is two casualties against that attacking French battalion. Okay, for the charge results, it'll simply be a minus one modifier to the French, because they suffered two casualties as they charged in. Okay, so the Allies get a three. They do have a reroll. The French get a four. They also have a reroll. So let's uh, do the first French reroll. Two, no. We will then do the second French reroll. We're rerolling the one. Okay. So the French have got a nine. They did still suffer two casualties from the charge. Um, so that will take that down to an eight. Okay. The Dutch Belgians, uh, Nassau, have a reroll because of their supporting battalion in the rear. And they also have support from their small battalion on their left flank. So uh, let's re-roll the one, and eight. I think we'll leave it at that, so that's eight against eight. Right, so the attacker doesn't close to combat, the French column stutters to a halt, and unleashes a ragged volley. They do a six, they do do one casualty on the Nassau, but that's it for this turn. Okay, so our cannon will open fire. This is a close effect uh, canister uh, with an extra combat dice because it's firing at a column. Again, another poor roll, so the Dutch aren't shooting well. A five and nothing from their combat dice. 
So canister at close range darts on one casualty to us attacking French corn. Okay, so we'll now do the charge result. It'll be minus one to French because they have suffered six cumulative casualties. Okay. Let's see, we'll uh, probably stick there with the Allies on a 10. Uh, and probably similarly with the French also on a 10 because I don't think rerolls are going to help as much. All right, let's see where that ends us up. Okay, so similar to the other salt, this column's column stutters to a halt uh, in the face of that shrapnel fire and lets loose a ragged volley against the cannon crew. And it does cause one casualty. Okay, it's now time for the militia to take up the challenge. They will do their defensive volley. It will be an inferior volley because uh, they've lost fire discipline, but given that they're a militia battalion, actually uh, there isn't uh, a lower category, so they would be firing an inferior volley anyway. Again, a succession of not great die rolls uh, for the Dutch Belgians. A five for an inferior volley is a loss of fire discipline, but they do cause one casualty uh, from the combat dice for firing at a column. Let's move on to the charge results for this one. Okay, so in this assault, both sides have thrown in their uh, brigadiers, but the uh, Dutch Belgians will be at minus one because they're uh, recruits and the French are regular line. All right, let's roll the charge results. Well, that's a bit better. The French get a double six, and that will be a uh, destiny test as well. Uh, and they win that by two. I don't think the Allies will re-roll because uh, on average they're going to uh, not do any better than a 4 on if they try and re-roll the 4. So the French have 1 by 2 which will go up to 3. So the attacker uh, will take the ground and the defender will retreat with 1d3 casualties. Alright, we'll take those casualties and do the retreat result. Okay, so there will be a risk of general test. Um, because of the uh, loss of uh, that charge result, um, and there will also be a destiny test. Let's roll the destiny test for the French. They roll a seven, that means they recover one casualty, so that casualty they suffered in the combat uh, will, uh, will fall away, and then let's roll the risk to the Dutch general. They roll a ten, unsightly demise, so the poor fellow is never seen again, he's been cut down, um, and the French uh, have caused their Dutch brigade to falter. That is unfortunate. Okay, so we'll move on to the last charge. Uh, just noting that this battalion's retreated, it fell back behind its fellows, so it's able to save itself from going off the board edge, but um, given that they were in support range, they were less than six inches, so in its initial six inch retreat move, it did unform its colleagues, so that um, militia battalion unfortunately is unformed. Right, let's do the defensive fire for this militia battalion. It's only suffered one casualty, so again, uh, let's see how they roll. Slightly better, they get an eight and an extra casualty from the combat dice. So an eight for an inferior volley is two casualties, so that's three casualties on that attacking French battalion. This battalion also has uh, the brigadier attached, but the Dutch Belgians have already deployed theirs into the other combat. Uh, so they don't get that bonus uh, as we do the charge results. Let's do the charge results for this one. Okay, so this one will be a straight right up, uh, roll off. The French uh, get minus two for suffering three casualties as they charged in, but the Dutch Belgians suffer a casualty, sorry, suffer a minus one modifier for being militia and a minus one modifier for being part of a faltering brigade. So it's a straight roll off. Let's uh, roll the large combat result. Okay, both get an eight. The Dutch do get a supporting battalion, so they will have a go at re-rolling that two. Oh dear, that's a seven. The French also have at least two re-rolls, so they will go and take that re-roll. That's a ten. I think we'll stick on that for the French. So ten against seven, they win by three. Similar to the other one, they will take the ground, and that militia battalion will retreat, and it will unform its supporting line battalion. Okay, so there was very little movement apart from uh, the charges, so there's been a, some minor shuffling amongst some of the French units. Uh, their previously retreating battalion has moved up, possibly to find some support benefits in due course. We're still holding off with our assault on the left, don't want to cause excessive casualties, especially now the Dutch Belgians are faltering here, we're hoping that flank may just collapse if we keep applying pressure to the regular units in the open. Alright, let's do the charge over here, so it'll be Four dice for the French, they lose one for attacking a strong point. Um, and the 
analyzer will get a five. Let's roll those. So the Allies cause two casualties, the French cause one. That combat can go on into a second round. Okay, so as we move into the second round, the French get the ability to throw in a second battalion, um, which is not great for the Dutch Belgians. Uh, and because the Nassau Light Company is already engaged in combat this round, I don't believe it would also be able to join the assault uh, because it was providing support to the melee in the centre. So the French get nine dice and the Allies will get five because you don't get the benefit. Uh, uh, no, he's still attacking a strong point, so actually I think the French will only get eight dice. Yes, and the Allies will get five. Let's roll for the effect of this assault. Alright, what we got here, so two casualties for the Allies. Three casualties caused by the French. So the Allies did pretty well. Uh, but in the second round, uh, loser retreats. All right, so the French have captured Jeanneau. And I did forget because uh, we had engineers, we should have had an extra assault dice for both the first and second round. So let's just see if we get two extra casualties. We don't. We only get one extra casualty uh, on the Dutch Belgians, but we'll leave the result the same. They have retreated out of the farm, and the French have captured it. All right, so this is looking quite good for the French at the end of turn four, beginning of turn five. Um, we've captured German Corps and we're applying a lot of pressure to the centre. The left flank for the Allies still looks pretty strong, but in the right they're in real trouble as their militia battalions have withered under the attack by Foy's division. So we've got some really important ADC rolls uh, and a falter test to do for this right hand Allied Brigade. Okay, so we've rolled for activation and good news for the Allies in that the left hand Brigade has gone active, so that means that retreating unit no longer is under retreat status, simply becomes unformed. Uh, the French have gone active uh, on both of Jerome's brigades and on Foy's assaulting brigade. They did go hesitant on the one that's pinning the farm on the far right flank, but that doesn't really disrupt their plans. Now, the Allies only had one ADC from their role. So this is a critical role. Let's see if they can recover this brigade uh, on the right-hand side. They get a six. They obey orders. That is good news, extremely good news for the Allies. At the start of turn six, the French are taking advantage of most of the Allies' forces being unformed and unable to move, so we have charged again here at the Nassau with a different battalion. Uh, again, charging the guns, uh, or it will be a, um, a compressed frontage here, so that we simply not into that, but we're bringing a fresh battalion in here. Jerome's brigade continues its assault on the weakened uh, militia brigade down here by assaulting here. Assaulting again there, and assaulting the line battalion there. So again, a fair amount of defensive fire to do, and charge results to execute. We'll crack on with those at the beginning of turn six. Okay, so we'll do the def Nassau defensive volley again, just to cure assault. A bonus dice for being attacked by a column, and a bonus dice for being attacked, or for being a large unit. Um, and actually an extra bonus dice, because I think this now counts as mass columns, given how close the French formations all are to one another. All right, so that's a five, which won't do anything uh, but two extra casualties from those combat dice. Okay, so we'll roll this, though we do get uh, supports for both the French and the Nassau. The French are at minus one, uh, so this is the sort of casualties they've suffered. Right, we'll bring that to two, so we'll take a French reroll on the one. That's one reroll. Then they've got a rear support reroll, we'll do that on the other one. That's an eight. Um, I think that's it for the French re-rolls. Then for the Allies, they've got a rear support re-roll. We will try and re-roll the two. We get a one, and then we've got a flank re-roll, which we will do. We'll just get a one. Okay, that's not great. So it's uh, eight against five, so they win by three. So the attackers um, will take the ground, and the Nassau will take one D3 casualties, retreat, and they will unform their support. So that means they take three casualties, and we'll do the retreats. Okay, so the Dutch artillery will have a go at holding off the attack of French column. Uh, he gets a two, which will be a fatigue casualty on itself, and one casualty from its combat dice. Okay, so let's do a straight roll for the charge result as the column tries to charge in against the artillery battery. The column gets a reroll for its support, but a minus one because it's uh, close. Okay, so that's a six, so they fail. That will be a retreat result for their column.
Okay, so now we have a defensive volley, it's a bit minus two. Uh, uh, and it'll be an inferior volley for being uh, being a militia battalion and uh, minus two for being unformed. So we've got five, so three, so that's nothing. All right, let's do the combat result as the French charge into this militia battalion. Okay, so this charge result will be a plus four to the French because of casualties on the militia battalion because the French have got their colonel attached from last turn and because the militia are unformed. All right, uh, the French do get a reroll. We will reroll that too. That's an eight against a nine, so that will be a plus three net result for the French, which means they will take the ground and the defender retreats with one d3 casualties. That will force them off the board. Okay, we'll do the next defensive volley, also at uh, an inferior volley at minus two, as the militia battalion again is unformed. So at five, at minus two is three, that will have no effect. Let's get on with the charge results. Uh, this will be at plus three to the French. Let's see what we get. French get a nine, Dutch get a eight. I think we won't use our reroll for this. We'll try to use our reroll for our light battalion. So that unfortunately means the Dutch have lost by four. Again, we'll take the ground and the defender has to retreat. This will be another fault to test because that's two retreating battalions this turn and unfortunately that one will also go off the table. Then finally, our last defensive wave from this line battalion. Um, they are reservists, but they haven't taken any cash of that, so they'll still be fighting his line, but they are unformed. They roll a five again, another terrible volley. The Dutch volleying in this game has been really, really very sad for them. Um, okay, so that battalion will charge in, and it will be at plus two, uh, because the defending battalion is unformed. Let's roll. All right. So we'll leave the Allies at 11 and we'll re-roll the French. Uh, we've got potentially two supports here. Okay, an 11 against 11 plus 2, so the French results will be at plus 2. So they will melee with Elan. Okay, so there's been very little shooting other than that mass of French skirmishers has caused some more casualties against that Dutch artillery battery. So it does feel like time for them to pull back. Um, as we look across here, we'll go straight on to hand-to-hand -hand as the French column crashes into this Dutch-Belgian line battalion. Okay, so let's roll the melee results. French will have six dice, uh, and the Allies will have four. Six for the French, because they're uh, um, with Helene, and four for the Allies, as they are informed. Terrible roll from the French. They only cause one casualties, and the Dutch cause two. So they will drive off that attacking French column. Okay, so let's do an overview of where we are at the end of turn six. So this is one game turn on the uh, Quattro Bra Hexorcism uh, board game. So the French have successfully captured Gemincourt. They are pushing the Nassau back and have pushed them off the ridge here. And um, both of those two French battalions here we can see are formed. The rearmost Nassau battalion has taken four casualties. Uh, but otherwise the Nassaus are in pretty good straight shape. The um, Dutch Belgian artillery does need to retire now. It's now taken five casualties. Um, artillery batteries, I think, only take eight, so it's pretty close to collapse, and there are a lot of French skirmishers around there, which will do it a lot of damage. So I think it's really time to withdraw that. On the other flank, the French have pretty much broken through in the centre. Um, two of the uh, Dutch Belgian battalions have broken. These two battalions remain unformed, but are reasonably strong, so they're still uh, intact-ish uh, around this farm. Uh, but we have got another fault test to do. So the French tactic of breaking the Allied centre, trying to isolate the two farms, is going well so far. There we are at the end of turn six. We'll do the fault test for turn seven, see where that puts us. OK, so we do have two active ADCs for the Allies. Let's see what that fault test gives us. It's a two. OK, we will definitely do a do re-roll. We get a six. The Allies obey orders again. And they are hanging on. Okay, I think that's a good place to call the game. Um, I, we've done uh, that one turn of the board game, so that, that ties in nicely, and I think if we were to go any further, um, the right thing to do for the Dutch-Belgians would be to retire off the table. The key for the French is they've kept, uh, captured the German Corps, and they can thrust uh, through this gap potentially here, 
uh, on the table with that is just that small company of sharpshooters uh, to try and exploit that weakness in the Allies' position, or they can funnel more for troops directly through Jim and Corps Farm itself. Um, they have broken the heart of the Allied position, and that is the road to Quatrobora. So they have got a route to advance. Um, the key to the Allied defence, their artillery battery, is uh, at the point of retiring uh, with that pulling back. Um, the overwhelming number of French uh, assaulting battalions uh, will overwhelm these Nassau, even though they've performed well and taken a few casualties so far. So will we, the, the, the Dutch will retire that artillery batter, battery in turn seven uh, and then start stepping back with the Nassau. And I think this is uh, the key reason why the Nassau are on the point of getting outflanked. Those two French infantry battalions there from uh, Jerome's Brigade, I think they're from. Uh, can start going in against the flank of uh, the Nassau position here, and they can stream through the centre now. And although they've survived two lots of false tests, the Dutch Belgian Brigade has uh, lost two of its five battalions. Um, and again, those last two have little support now, and they're being uh, um, overwhelmed. The French are in a good position and will quite shortly, I think, drive them off the table. So, time for a retirement. Um, that's been a really quite fun game, and I like the tie-in to the board game. Let me know how you think this has gone, whether you've enjoyed this sort of format. Uh, as I say, we've uh, potentially got a Brunswicker uh, game against the 5th Division and the Cavalry Division in Marais Corps. Uh, we'll see whether we um, play that one next weekend. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the game, guys. I'll just do a final flyover of what the board looks like, and uh, see you all again next time. Cheers, everyone. See you next time. Okay, so we're now just going to do the combats uh, in the game, and we'll see how that turns out, and we'll do a comparison, but I'll uh, finally um, adjust the counters using the actual game we played. All right, just completed the two phases. In the first phase, we drove off a, um, uh, one of the infantry battalions, causing it to rout. Uh, and we attacked uh, Jumancourt uh, and uh, along the line along the road, this is the French, uh, and drove one of the Dutch-Belgian battalions away. And our second activation, the Dutch-Belgians and the Allies brought Picton's division forward to form up on the other side of the stream, uh, and then we reactivated Raleigh's division. Um, well, we actually activated Kellerman, brought Kellerman forward first, and then uh, the following activation that activated Raleigh's division. Uh, and <coughs> performed another level of uh, round of attacks, but didn't actually attack German Corps this time, uh, or the farm at the other end, but went for an attack through the centre. Sounds a familiar tactic. Uh, we've destroyed one um, Dutch Belgian battalion, that is the first, second Nassau, uh, and took out the foot artillery battery, and we caused another Dutch Belgian bat battalion, the first of the 28th Orange Nassau to rout, and the 27th Dutch Jaegers also to rout. They were both uh, outside Jemakor. So uh, although the two strong points are still held in Dutch Belgian hands, the road is now clear to advance towards Quatre Bras. So actually quite a similar outcome 
uh, to what we saw in our game. So we've knocked out uh, one artillery battery, caused two battalions to uh, lose about 50% of their strength, and wiped out one battalion in full. Whereas in the game we played on the table, I caused two battalions to retreat off table. Uh, they suffered half to two thirds casualties. And another battalion, the one occupying Shaman Corps, uh, was down to about half casualties. And there were a few other sprinkling of casualties around the Dutch Nassau. So in both games, actually, casualties were pretty similar. And the French, perhaps not surprisingly, given their weight of forces, uh, have been able to force the uh, road uh, and uh, are now able to resume their advance to Quatre Bar. My next game, uh, as I mentioned uh, on the earlier video, will be perhaps to play this engagement around Thile as, or Thile, uh, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, as the 5th uh, French Division uh, and the 2nd um, Cavalry are uh, attacking the Brunswickers that are holding the Allies flank. Alright, have a great day everyone, catch up with you soon.